welcome to our online worship for the fourth week in the season of Advent. My name is Jo White. This week we're focusing our attention on the father of Jesus, Joseph of Nazareth. Pope Francis referred to St. Joseph as a father in the shadows. Perhaps it's time we gave Joseph an opportunity to shine. We're gathered on the land of the Bunurong people. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. The Lord be with you and also with you. The collect for this fourth week in the season of Advent, let us pray. Gracious God, you chose the Virgin Mary by your grace to be the mother of our Lord and Saviour. So fill us with your grace that with her we may rejoice in your salvation and in these things embrace your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we light the fourth candle on our Advent wreath, let us pray. It's almost time, Lord, and we are as ready as we can be. Help us celebrate your incarnation with true joy. You are the greatest gift of all, and you give yourself to the whole world. As we celebrate with our families and friends at church, at dinner, and in the exchanging of gifts, May we be transformed by your overwhelming love. May we offer you our adoration as the angels and the shepherds offered theirs that first Christmas night. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah chapter 7 beginning at verse 10. Again the Lord spoke to Isaiah saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol and high as heaven. But Azar said, I will not ask and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose kings you are in dread will be deserted. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, you that led Joseph like a flock, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine out in glory. Before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your power and come to save us. Restore us again, O Lord of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry at your people's prayer? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in good measure. You have made us the victim of our neighbours and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us again, O Lord of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Let your power rest on the man at your right hand, on that son of a man whom you made so strong for yourself. And so we shall not turn back from you. Give us life and we will call upon your name. Restore us again, O Lord of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. The beginning of the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 1. Paul 
a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome, who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 1, beginning at verse 18. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you will name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place, place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son and he named him Jesus. For the gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, last week, Advent 3, we rejoiced with Mary as she received the news that she would be the mother of Jesus. Today, we turn to Joseph, who with Mary and Jesus completes the Holy Family. In December of 2020, Pope Francis declared 2021 the year of St. Joseph. Against the backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic, which Pope Francis says has helped us to see more clearly the importance of ordinary people who in their quiet way exercise patience and offer hope every day. In this, they resemble St. Joseph, the man who goes unnoticed, a daily discreet and hidden presence who nonetheless played an incomparable role in the history of salvation. Pope Francis describes Joseph as a beloved father, a tender and loving father, an obedient father, an accepting father, a father with a creatively courageous spirit, working away, a father in the shadows. We almost overlook Joseph, and yet there he stands beside Mary as her husband. Joseph, who is of the line of David, gives Jesus his royal lineage. If we were to peep back into the open, opening 16 verses of the Gospel of Matthew, we would find there the genealogy of Jesus from Father Abraham right down to Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called 
Messiah. Pope Francis describes Joseph's fatherhood of Jesus as the earthly shadow of the heavenly father. Fathers are not born but made, says Pope Francis. A man does not become a father simply by bringing a child into the world, but by taking up the responsibility of the care of that child. Joseph did not think of himself, but focused instead on the lives of Mary and, Joseph, and Jesus. Joseph made a decision to take Mary as his wife, a decision that in, was enabled by the visit of the angel in his dreams. Our Advent journey includes the visit of angels to Mary and to Joseph, God's messengers. They help Joseph to see that what is happening to Mary and to him is not simply a human problem. This is God breaking in to human history to be with us. Here is the fulfillment of prophecy. As we read in chapter 7 of Isaiah, look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. And again, we hear this in verse 23 of Matthew. Joseph is to be responsible for Mary and for Jesus, to take her as his wife and to raise not just a child, but Emmanuel, God with us. Joseph is to name the child Jesus, which means something like God saves. When we use the title Jesus Christ, what we're saying is God saves by the coming of the anointed one. And it is Joseph who gives Jesus his name. It's customary in Jewish families for the father to name a child. And Joseph names not only Jesus' name, but also his purpose. Maybe it doesn't seem very extraordinary these days um, with ultrasounds to know the gender of your child before it's born. Our own grandson was named before he was even born. But for Mary and Joseph to be told by an angel that there would be a male child and what the name of that child was to be, now that was exceptional. Joseph, well, he might have been a father in the shadows, but there's a lot to learn about life as a father and a husband from Joseph. Joseph is a man of deep spiritual insight. He doesn't just dismiss the angel as nonsense. Upon waking, he did exactly what the angel told him to do. Joseph is such a strong presence for Mary and Jesus as they travel to Bethlehem, as they flee from Herod's soldiers, and as they bring up Jesus to be a good Jewish child. What we get from Joseph's encounter with the angel is a fuller understanding of Jesus' purpose. As we read in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, Jesus will save his people from their sins. Jesus comes to free the world from sin. How that plays out is the message of the good news of Jesus Christ. But for now, we're, we're just let in on the secret that Jesus is no ordinary child, but is the Son of God, and that Jesus is the one who saves God's people. In today's readings, we hear the name of Emmanuel mentioned by the prophet Isaiah and again in the Gospel of Matthew. This is a very special and rarely used name for the one who is longed for. Emmanuel is a Hebrew word that literally means God is with us. Matthew presents Jesus as Emmanuel, the one through whom God dwells with God's people. What Matthew does here is bring into sharper focus 
both the desire of God to be with us and God's willingness to come down from heaven in order to experience all that being human involves. Jesus was born into a human family so that he might live a human life. Jesus, fully human and fully divine, lived our human life and as such, a human father was both necessary and important. Joseph was the man selected by God to support protect and love Jesus and his mother Mary. A child being born to a virgin, well, is a miracle like the miracles of the past in which children were born to women who were infertile or past the age of childbearing. The miracle of the virgin birth is like this, but it is also so much more than this. God does this most wonderful thing because Jesus is like no other child before or since. Jesus is holy. Jesus is God with us. St. Joseph is the patron saint of fathers, of families, and especially of carpenters. It is in Matthew that we discover Joseph, a man of faith ready to listen and respond to the angels. Joseph struggled with the miracle of Jesus' conception in much the same way as we might. Joseph, a godly man, chooses to take these struggles to God. We too are comforted by many things. We're confronted by many things that confuse and challenge us. But as people of faith, we can and we do take these things to God. It is often in the silence of prayer that answers are to be found. It's often in the silence that answers are heard. For Joseph, answers came to him in his dreams. The Lord sent an angel to guide Joseph and to allay his fears. Now, we not, might not be visited by angels, but we certainly can receive clear messages from God about what is true. We can experience healing, peace, comfort, and guidance as we pray. We can also expect to be shaken up by God. If we have the courage to ask God those deep questions, the ones that we're frightened even to ask ourselves, well, we can expect God to respond. Joseph is an example to us of a parent who relied on God in all aspects of his life, including the tough decisions of his new family. As we seek to be people of faith, let us, like Joseph, be reminded to take our struggles and our worries to God in prayer and to rely on him for guidance and for support in all aspects of our life. Let us pray for the world and for the church. God, our Heavenly Father, we offer our prayers for a world in need of a saviour. As we wait in hope-filled expectation for the coming of Jesus, we pray that now will be the time for peace, that with the coming of the Prince of Peace, nations will give up war and that the poor will be afforded justice. We pray that all refugees would find a welcome and a home, that those who are hungry would be given a feast and those who are cold be given warmth and shelter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we pray for our, for our churches as we await the celebration of Christmas, that you would unite all of us in prayer and joyful celebration. We pray for all church leaders and for those lay leaders who offer their talents and their energies to lift up the name of Jesus at this time. Bless us with your peace 
your joy and your saving power. We seek your blessing upon all our plans for Christmas, especially those services that engage people of faith, people with little faith and people of no faith. May our offerings give glory to you and be an open door for those who seek you this Christmas tide. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our heavenly Father, we offer our prayers for the sick and all who are feeling the weight of this season. We continue to offer prayers for those struggling in the wake of recent flooding. May help come to them and bring hope for a brighter tomorrow. We pray too for families, especially where families are separated, broken or experiencing tension. Heal all broken hearts, bind up our wounds and bring us a sense of your abiding love. Bless all fathers and those who offer the love and caring support of a father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we offer our prayers for those who are experiencing sadness because of the passing of a loved one. This time of year can be especially painful when we remember those we have shared our lives with and who have gone to their heavenly rest. So we remember them now in this time of prayer. We whisper their name into your ear, praying rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Amen. Let us share in a prayer for St. For Saint Joseph. Hail guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you, God entrusted his only son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace and mercy and courage and defend us from every evil. Amen. And let's share in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The notices for this week. This Sunday, the 18th of December at four o'clock, St. St. Philip's cows will resound with all the Christmasiness of our traditional service of nine lessons and carols. This service will be followed by refreshments in the rectory. Well, Christmas is drawing near and perhaps you're planning your attendance at worship over this time. On Christmas Eve, there are two 5 p.m. services. One, a family carol service in the parish hall in Cowes, and also at 5 p.m., a family service at St. Augustine's in San Remo. 7.30 p.m. will be a carols and Holy Communion service at St. Paul's in Bass. And then later on, half past 11 on Christmas Eve, midnight mass at St. Philip's Cowes, followed by sparkling refreshments and Christmas cake on the lawn. On Christmas Day, 8 a.m. at Holy Communion at St. Augustine's in San Remo, and then 10 a.m. Holy Communion at St. Philip's in Cowes. Carols by the Bay. You might have been wondering what happened to the carols this week. It was postponed due to bad weather and has now been rescheduled for this coming Tuesday, the 20th of December, 7.30 p.m. on the foreshore. It's going to be lots of fun, and the final um, cherry on the cake will be a display of fireworks. Don't miss the amazing installation in the churchyard at St. Philip's Cows. Lots of people, artists, writers, handymen and women, have banded together to offer this wonderful telling of the Christmas story. 
why not bring your Christmas visitors down for a look? Next week will be our Christmas service for you online. And then we're going to have a short break and return to our video services of the word from the 13th of January, 2023. Christ, the son of righteousness, shine upon you and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. As we prepare for the coming of the Son of God, let us remember the importance of Joseph to Mary and to baby Jesus. May God bless you.